you can scream from the rooftops that the brain has 80 billion neurons as much as you want, but it simply will not click. And you need to show it and communicate with somebody's perceptions and their emotions directly. I just completed a project that was funded by the National Science Foundation with my collaborator, uh, Dr. Brian Edwards, who's an applied physicist at, at Penn, where we were working out of, which is the most complex artistic depiction of the brain in the world, which is hanging at the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia. And that piece stretched me harder than I'd ever been stretched before, because both because of the, the rigor of the neuroscientific content, but also in really trying to break out of the way in which the brain is typically visualized in still images. Um, and so we invented this technique called reflective micro-etching that we use to depict uh, activated neural circuitry. Um, so we're creating, an, creating animations through reflected light and doing algorithmic simulations of the brain, combined with hand drawing and other sort of data inputs. Uh, it gets a little complicated, but what we want to be able to do is just to get the average person to look at a piece of art like this and to just for a moment actually understand a little piece of how complex the brain really is. The limbic system is tied in with visual processing at a very deep level. So knowing this as a neuroscientist, I understand the fact that some degree of that information about basic form is going into the limbic system for emotional analysis prior to your really perceiving what it is that you're looking at, such that everything that you're looking at has that emotional quality to it, whether or not you realize it. Um, and it's for the evolutionary purpose of being able to have a reaction that's that much quicker to a threatening form or something like this that would be really hardwired into your brain. So because of that, um, a person can be conscious based upon how they design the silhouette of a piece in particular. Or in my case, I, I also understand that humans seem to have a very instinctual draw to things which are brightly reflective that these are activating the limbic system in a way that you can take advantage of in order to add additional visual interest to your piece so that people are interested to ask deeper questions about the scientific content. In a globally competitive world where there are beautiful images coming from everywhere and in the fine art world where there is work that's very uh, conceptual or conceptually based uh, that doesn't pay a lot of attention to aesthetics, it's, uh, it's my opinion that strong art should have both of those things going for it. It should be both aesthetically beautiful and taking advantage of the fact that your brain is primed to be able to, to recognize something that's beautiful and to be conceptually deep so that the piece continues to evolve in your mind as you think about it or as you look at it on your wall every day. Mm -hmm.